Hi gang, this is called a gravity light. As this weight slowly falls, it turns this large diameter bicycle wheel, which then turns this smaller pulley. That's connected to this generator, which powers this light. So it's a gravity powered light. In this video, I'll show you how I made it. I've also advanced it since my initial video for this. Instead of two minutes, it now runs for just over eight minutes and gives more light. More on that later. I first wanted to know if this was doable. The first step was to find a suitable generator. On my Google Plus page, user Mongol Shark mentioned that microwave oven motors might work. So I took one from a microwave oven I had sitting around for parts. I took apart this old flashlight to remove the reflector and housing. I put a bright 20,000 millicandela white LED in it. Taping it all together, I tried it out. That showed how fast I'd need to turn it for a decent amount of light. A microwave oven motor is designed to turn slowly, so don't damage it by turning too fast. I then did these calculations to see if I could convert the slowly falling masses to a fast enough speed for this generator by making use of a bicycle wheel. You can find these calculations on my webpage here or use the link in the description below this video. So it looked like it might be doable. I had this old light post I could use for a stand. A quick check showed where the wheel would go. I removed the light fixture from the top of the post since I knew I'd need to slide some things down onto it. I then made this wooden frame. That slides down onto the pole and stops wherever there's something in the way, like this switch sticking out of the pole. I made the wooden frame at this early stage in the construction so I could make sure the other parts would fit with it. Then I started on this generator assembly. That includes the generator, a small pulley, and some bearings. I needed a metal plate to mount the generator onto, so I cut some metal from this old microwave oven. I drilled a big hole for the generator shaft and smaller mounting holes. I then bolted the generator to the mounting plate. I needed to attach a long and larger diameter shaft to the small generator shaft. So I gathered my brass tubes together, the smallest one being small enough for the generator shaft. Notice that they fit inside each other until finally I got to the size needed for the pulley. I cut the brass pieces and fitted them together. Next I'd cut a piece of wood with this odd shaped hole in it, large enough for the generator. Note these holes in the wood for mounting it to the big wooden frame later. Notice that the generator shaft isn't round. It's flat on one side so that you can grip it. So I got out an 832 tap set and drilled two holes, one on either side of the brass shaft. I then tapped the holes, basically making screw threads. I then screwed in a set screw part way using an Allen key. I put the brass tubes on the generator shaft with the set screw against the flat part of the generator shaft. After putting that one in, I turned it around and put in the other set screw on the other side. Next, I slid the pulley onto the shaft. I'll position it precisely later. I saw that there's some resistance to turning the motor, but it's not too bad. And now for the bearings to hold the other side of the shaft. I had these two pieces of wood already screwed together. Notice I'd made big holes in them using spade bits. The bigger hole in this piece doesn't go all the way through. I sat a bearing in one hole and a bearing in the other one. I had another piece that acts as a cover for one bearing. The other bearing will be pressed against the big wooden frame, so it doesn't need a cover. Notice these four holes for mounting it to the big wooden frame shortly. The brass shaft was too small for the holes in the bearings, so I increased the diameter by wrapping tape around it. Pulling it together, I saw that it worked great. I next added some vinyl tape to the pulley surfaces to give it more friction. The generator assembly was done. Before putting everything on the pole, I figured I'd better make it able to handle some weight. I had this old projector screen from a garage sale. It was easy enough to take apart, leaving just the support. I used cable ties to tie my pole to it. Done. Next, I worked on the pulley belt. I put the wheel in place, and then the generator assembly. The belt is a bungee type stretch cord. Once I got some idea of how long the belt needed to be, I stitched the two ends together. I then put it in place. Notice the slots for raising and lowering the generator assembly to adjust the belt tension. I connected some wire to the generator output and connected the LED to the other end. The LED lights up. Some testing showed that if I wrapped vinyl tape around the belt, then I got more friction and it worked even better. I then took a bicycle chain and put bent clothes hanger wire for hooks on the ends. I put it on the largest diameter sprocket. I couldn't pull hard enough to get it rotating, but if I gave the wheel a turn first, then I could pull to keep it going. I hooked up a scale and pulled again. The scale showed a mass of close to eight kilograms. That's eight liters of water, or around two gallons. So I suspended eight kilograms of water and gave the wheel a turn. It turned, 
and the LED was lit. But that wasn't the end of the story. The top of the pole broke a bit inside, so I reinforced it with this stiff copper pipe. That also meant drilling out the wood here a bit more. Also, if the whole thing leaned forward too much from the weight, then the chain started to slip off here. So I added a piece of plastic, cut from the top of some old container. It did a great job keeping the chain moving onto the sprocket properly. My runtime was previously only two minutes, but I noticed that as the masses got lower down here, and the chain on this side got shorter, the masses would fall faster than needed, shortening the runtime. So I added a counterweight to this side, so that that side would never get too lightweight. With that enhancement, I now got a runtime of just over four minutes. The next big enhancement, however, got me to eight minutes by adding some circuitry. Looking at the output of the generator on the oscilloscope, you can see it's around three to five volts AC, alternating current, measured across a 220 ohm resistor, and depending on how fast I turn it. The current is around one to three milliamps. So I made up this circuit, and here's the circuit diagram. I put together a bunch of 1N4002 diodes as a full wave bridge rectifier to convert it from AC to DC and take advantage of the current in both directions. I also added a 4700 microfarad 35 volt capacitor to smooth it out and to store energy for when the pulley is slowed down or stopped. And for some current protection for the diodes, I added a 91 ohm half watt resistor after the capacitor. It was likely that there was more power available than one LED could handle. So I also tested light levels from two to four LEDs and settled on three. I soldered together all the pins in each side of a chip socket and plugged my LEDs into that. I also took apart a flashlight from a thrift shop and mounted the LEDs and socket at the opening. I then taped two pieces of coax cable together. I soldered the wires from the chip socket to one end. I reused the flashlight body too to solidify it all. I taped a length of clothes hanger wire to add stiffness and use that to hold it in place. And here's everything connected together, just behind the generator. I then attach the masses to the hook on the chain. Notice that the chain is now on the next smaller sprocket. You'll have to really watch to notice that the masses are falling. It's easier to see if you watch the spokes on the wheel. I sit back and read. With the additional power from the other half of the alternating current cycle and the additional LEDs, I get more light than I did before. And, I now get a runtime of just over eight minutes. I decided to be daring and put the chain on the next smaller sprocket yet. I of course had to add more mass, but it gave off not quite enough light and the masses had a tendency to stop falling. I'm sure I could keep hacking at this version, but I'll stop here with what I've learned and think about the next version instead. But for now, time to sit back and relax for a well-earned rest with a good book. Well, thanks for watching. See my YouTube channel, Rimstar.org, for more how to make videos like this. That includes my first Gravity Light version 1 video where I introduced this, another on my much more advanced Gravity Light that runs for longer, and one on how to make a Van de Graaff generator using stuff from around the house. And don't forget to subscribe if you like these videos, or give a thumbs up, or leave a question or comment below. See you soon.